United States government under the control of aliens underground. That would explain a lot. Welcome to Skywatch TV for Monday, April 4th, 2016. I'm Derek Gilbert. Joining us in studio, gentleman who has got a couple of interesting new products out there. The new book, Empire Under the Ice, How the Nazis Won World War II, and the documentary series, True Legends. This is entry number two, a two-disc set called The Unholy Sea. We welcome Steve Quayle to well, Derek, the and now we know we're, you know, we make jokes about sometimes where our, <laughs> our, our, our supposed rulers have their heads. Well, we know that it seems that the heads yeah. are underneath the earth even today march 31st we're doing this update right. for skywatch and the headlines that have, are across the internet not obviously on the mainstream news but edward snowden who had the highest security clearance you can have in the national security agency came forth and said the american government is controlled by aliens who live under the earth hmm. now again that's going to seem so out there to people but the point that is critical is that this now is snowballing, this being the information that's arcane. You know, when Tom and I talked about genetic engineering, transhumanism, the stuff we were talking about 15 years ago, uh, uh, 17 years ago, I think he said, the, we're beyond that now. Everything that used to be conspiracy theory, you know, or uh, uh, just too far out there, Yet, if people notice a uh, UFO phenomenon, my email fills up by genuine Bible-believing Christians with encounters that are so preternatural. So again, when you talk to all of the different experts, when you talk to theologians, when you talk to whether a third generation medicine men in the desert mm -hmm. southwest or self-professing illuminists, and they can prove they really are who they are, by the way, I want to say something. In true legend, uh, of the you know, our of the unholy sea, we're not condoning what they're into. We're showing you the level of depravity, of absolute, total uh, Satanism, but a Satanism that goes beyond just a ceremony in black roads. We're talking about the rulers of this present mm -hmm. darkness. Yeah, and we're, we're talking about these aliens under the ground. We're not talking about extraterrestrials from Zeta Reticuli. We're talking about interdimensional beings that have been here on planet Earth with us the whole time. There seems to be a consensus amongst all the experts, authorities, and the people that I claim, uh, you know, really are, their hearts are in this, they're following the Lord with all their might, and they're seeking God for his revelation, that everyone knows they're getting ready to make their appearance publicly. Excuse me, a number of years ago, uh, I was on talk radio, and, and instantly I started talking, I have to say it was a prophetic moment, that the very invisible things that have dwelt in mankind's imagination will become visible. The things of men's nightmares will materialize. Mm. Men's hearts will fail them for looking upon those things coming upon the earth. And I, I said that, and I, I kind of, you know, when I shut up and sit back and go like this and say, whoa, Lord, what are you trying to tell me? It's, you know, when, when I talk to people, I, I went to film school, I got a couple degrees. I don't have as many degrees as a thermometer, but some of the people <laughs> that write me hateful emails, you'd, you'd swear they were, you know, a thermometer. Uh, they got a degree in everything, mm -hmm. you know, and then they want to give me the third degree. <laughs> but the bottom line is, is that we're at that time now where so many of the prophetic words, and like Tom and I said, everybody needs to know this, that the Word of God is what Tom and I and everybody at Skywatch, we're, that's what our foundation is. But there is a biblical answer to all the craziness that's out there. One of the most astounding statements, and, and we need to bring this out, when Tom and Chris Putnam were at the Vatican Observatory at Mount Graham, and basically the astronomer said, sometimes you've got to wait for our field of view to clear out because there are so many UFOs. That wasn't a joke. Huh. And I don't know if you remember that, but we've got Tom. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah the, I'll tell you what's interesting. There's a different, the, there's a, I like to get Tom wound up and get him going immediately to the bottom line because one thing leads to another. But some of the most remarkable things that, I mean, I've ever heard in all my years of investigation, writing, and being on talk radio, and Tom says, oh yeah, by the way, they said this. And I go, we got to make a big deal out of this, Tom. That's a huge admission. 
one of the most sophisticated infrared telescopes and the astronomers associated with it, obviously the acronym Lucifer. Mm -hmm. Oh, there was no reason to name it that. Sure, you know? sure. So, so what's happening, Derek? And just with this statement today, March 31st, by the way, I got that on my email at 3, 3.40, A.M. Missouri time. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I that's that's look. that's a key hour for the occult for some reason. Yeah, it's three it's, in the morning. Know, yeah, you know, and for those of us that you know, we measure sleep in hours. You know, actually in minutes sometimes. But the point is, is that that this is a time for people not to be ashamed of the gospel. Okay, this is a time where and and listen. The, the excitement about it is, is that if you get a red letter version of the Bible, ladies and gentlemen, that's the words of Jesus, and pay attention to Matthew 24, Luke 21, the book of Revelation. And I tell everybody, you know, my chief, uh, let's say, flashpoint is when people will say, yeah, the book of Revelation says this. I said, you know what the book of Revelation is? It's a revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave to his servant John on the mm -hmm. island of Patmos. This isn't the revelation of Nostradamus. This isn't the revelation of Mother Shipton. This is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Right. And so I'm putting that in perspective because, you know, people say, why is this important to the Christians? You know, why do the Christians need to know this? Because if they don't understand the root of deceit, they will be deceived. Exactly. The lying signs and wonders. So Derek, I really am grateful to be able to give this, you know, literally this multi-hour ago uh, update to mm. all of the Skywatch listeners and viewers. Well, one of the things I've really become convinced of in recent years is if you don't understand where we're coming from, Genesis 1, and mm -hmm. you don't understand where we're going, which is Revelation plus Ezekiel, Daniel, Zechariah, right. you know, then you are open to all kinds of deception. Right. And what one of the one of the key those who control the past determine the future. Right. That's the that's the statement that basically undergirds or is a foundation for everything that we're doing, both at Skywatch TV at Gen 6 Productions. Well, then uh, Genesis, say, chapters 1 through 6, or even 1 through, say, 10, where we talk about the Tower of Babel incident with mm -hmm. Nimrod and the, uh, the, the uh, artificial cosmic mountain that he was trying to build right. there, the Tower of Babel. Uh, eliminating that from the history of Christendom, how does that affect our future? Well, basically, you've got uh, the reintroduction of techno Babylon now, okay? Because you've got the transhumanists are po promising, basically, they're counteracting everything God told Adam in the garden that he would surely die, you know? And the bottom line is he ate of the knowledge of tree, the knowledge of the tree, of, of fruit of the tree of good and evil, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ah, the bottom line in this, and I say the bottom line because look, at the end of a day, you know, you can have all this flowery speech, but how does it affect my life? So in all realms, the single word for the day is be ye not deceived. I have made the claim for 25 years on talk radio. It's not the fruit of evil. Everybody gets hung up in the fruit of evil. It's the root of evil. When, when, when you want to deal with the ongoing production of evil fruit, you've got to lay the ax to the tree. Jesus spoke about that. So what we're seeing right now, Derek, is the, the drawing line. Choose ye this day. Who is on the Lord's side? Yeah. And, and so when I see all of the CERN, and obviously Sharon's talking about all of the genetic manipulation, the genetic alteration, I mean, you know, we're, the entire, and I coined a term, I think this is important, tech decadence. That's hmm, technological mm -hmm. decadence, I think 20 years ago. When you see where that's headed, it is the destruction with all humans. Now, someone says, well, why is what you're saying important to me? Because they want you dead, they want your children dead, they want your grandchildren dead. And it's just like education. They are killing cognitive thinking in yes. America. Yeah. And Christians, I, you know, I get heartbroken. As a matter of fact, I think I could go get my phone with its 400 emails from last night no exaggeration, and you could see that probably three of those emails, pray for my seven sons. One's in, I'm not making fun, I just want you to know, one's in prison, one's in divorce, one's gone crazy, you know, and, and I mean, and these are Christian moms, these are Christian dads, you know, mm -hmm. so this stuff is critical, because be ye not deceived, deception is the order of the day. That's why Tom and I make, go, go, and I say this, because I love his, uh, I wish I could be as linear as Tom Horn, because <laughs> I would really like that, but I'm not. And so the thing is, 
this is why we've been placed together, I believe, by the Lord, you know, because again, Jesus sent them out by twos, the disciples, you know, and in this world now, there's so much animus towards Christians. Christians are being vilified. A number of years ago, I, I, I think you, Sharon, she's in the audience. She listened to me on talk radio, but I said the formula God gave me was identify, vilify, nullify, destroy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the Christians are being vilified, nullified, doesn't get any more nullifying than absolutely uh, Christianity disappearing from the Middle East, Christianity disappearing from Europe. Well, I tell American Christians, don't be smug because biblical Christianity that on, honors the living God, that loves Jesus Christ, where the church bells used to ring out, mm -hmm. where a preacher would get up, and, and I'm, I'm, this is not the Bible, but he'd get up and he'd, he'd preach from the Word of God under the anointing of the Holy Ghost for an hour, mm -hmm. and people would get convicted of their sin. Yeah. That's gone. Yeah. You know, instead it's, it's uh, your friendship with the world is enmity with God. What did God put in the garden between the seeds of, you know, Adam and the enmity? And, 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 right. and that means perpetual warfare. And if you look it up, I, I looked up 40 words. And I mean, it's not a good thing. It's not a, it means you can't choose to fight or not fight. You are there. You either overcome by the victory of the blood of Jesus and faith in Jesus Christ, or you succumb. Mm -hmm. Yeah. True Legends, the Unholy Sea, the uh, tagline down at the bottom of the DVD, those who control the past determine the future. Steve, when will this be available? It will be out available by May 15th. Actually, you know, I mean, we're shipping it to you guys and meaning from, uh, I think, those, wherever they're printed, Midwest someplace. So it, they'll be available and people are waiting. See, again, when you start to create an appetite for truth, only God can satiate it. But when you're hungry, mm -hmm. that's when the Word of God promises that He will fill you. Derek, thank you so much. Well, appreciate it. Uh, that is, in fact, the truth. Those who control the past, uh, we don't understand where we've come from, and so we're going back to Babel. We're making the same mistakes again. Uh, they're trying to rebuild the kingdom of Nimrod, the globalists, and that is uh, one of the issues that is... Uh, so important that tackled that, that is tackled in this uh, documentary series by Steve Quayle and Timothy Alberino. Uh, Sheila Zelensky has also addressed that topic in a recent book, Green Gospel, the New World Religion, and that is the featured program on Skywatch TV this week. You'll find it uh, today on the Victory Television Network. That's this evening at 8.30 p.m. Central Time across Arkansas and in the Memphis area. You'll find it numerous times tomorrow. Uh, Wednesday, the Cornerstone Network, Coast to Coast, and this coming Saturday again on the Victory Television Network and the Christian Television Network. You'll find all of those dates, times, and stations at skywatchtv.com. Check the top menu bar there where it says channel listing. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that's the intro. I'm going to catch my breath, and we'll be back tomorrow. We thank you for watching as we keep watch. I'm Derek Gilbert, and this is Skywatch TV. From the time she was little, Nita dreamed of horses. Every childhood fantasy rode on the back of a heroic white steed, coming to save the day. I don't know how long I've had this love in my heart for horses. It's just always been there. And when we were little girls, my sister and I would play all day long. I was always the white horse and she was always the little pink pig. But everything changed in a heartbeat. On December 9, 1971, a tragic car accident claimed the life of my dad and my best friend and my little sister. And I wondered after that if there was anything left to believe in. As a child of 13, I felt like I had lost practically everything. 
And I wondered, is this it? I mean, where do I go from here? I could not have imagined back then how God could use horses, of all things, to restore my faith and vision for the future. Starting April 19th, get your copy of Nita Horn's inspirational new book, No Fences, and learn for the first time her amazing story of loss, survival, determination, and healing. How the vision and love God gave her for these beautiful and majestic animals eventually led to the 150-acre Whispering Ponies Ranch a general retreat facility, as well as a premier training location that specializes in using and gifting therapeutic animals to benefit the herding, other care facilities, schools and ministries across the nation. When God puts something in your heart, it's there for a lifetime.